everyone, today's video is sponsored by Small Rig. So there are six reasons why your photos are not sharp and today I'm going to show you how to fix them with examples out on location. I'm using the AP100, which is a carbon fiber tripod from Small Rig. This is a super lightweight tripod that's really easy to travel with. Today, we're mostly going to be doing landscape photography, but we are also going to be doing some portraits as well. I'm also going to tell you everything you need to know about this AP100 as well, because if you're doing landscape or travel photography, a good tripod is an absolute must. Since we have such a beautiful location with the water, I really want to capture the movement of the water. So I'm going to start off by taking a handheld shot. If your photos are looking like this, then that means your first problem with getting sharp images is motion blur, and specifically motion blur from your camera. One of the easiest ways to fix this is by using a sturdy tripod. So this tripod uses an arca plate, so that's what I have on the bottom of my camera. I'm using the Sony a7 IV today, and I have the GM 35mm f1.4. I have a couple of other lenses, but we're going to start with this one first. So I'm going to lift the tripod up and I'm going to use the bore head because I really want a portrait orientation shot to start off with. So now that we have the camera on a tripod, we can use lower shutter speeds to capture movement of the water. But make sure everything else that's in the frame that's not moving, such as the rocks, are tack sharp, even when you zoom in to 100%. If it is super windy, you can hang your camera bag off this hook on the center column to add just some extra weight and make the tripod more sturdy. Pro tip. Make sure your camera bag is always touching the ground. If you have a swaying camera bag, it'll shake the camera and the tripod and you'll get motion blur in your images anyway. The next thing you want to do is set your camera on a two second timer because every time you physically press the shutter button, you're going to make the whole camera shake, which is going to affect your photo. Also, the tide is going down, so I have to wait for some water to come into my frame so I can get that movement. Might be a while. I want to decrease my shutter even more just to get more motion in my photo. So I'm going to add an ND filter so I can do that without having to bump up my aperture too much. Yeah. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay. So now I'm at F4 and four second exposure. The next reason your photos are not sharp is from motion blur, but from your subject rather than your camera. So in this water photo, it's intentional, but you might be capturing a photo of a person or an animal. If they are blurred in your photo, that means that they are moving too fast for your chosen shutter speed. So I want to try a different composition. So let's head down to the sand. I've got a composition that I want to get with the rock over there and I'm going to move the tripod to the sand. So I'm going to take the rubber feet off and underneath you've got little spikes. Another little tip I have is if you're not opening your tripod the whole way and you only want to open one section, then I would recommend to always open it up from the thicker section first. That will keep your tripod being more sturdy and more stable. If you are opening it the whole way though, this has a cool little shortcut. So this bottom rubber one, you can twist it twice and then you can unlock all of them at the same time, <laughs> just by twisting one. But in this case, I don't want to open up my tripod the whole way because I want to get some of the waves in the foreground of the shot. So I'm going to open it like that. But because we are on dirty terrain, I do want to use the bottom thinnest pole because I don't mind if this section here gets dirty. It's a lot easier to wipe this away if you're on sand or you're in mud rather than getting these sections dirty. So I framed the C-stack to be in the middle and now I'm going to wait for some waves to come in and fill the frame. So unlike our first photo where I was using a slow shutter speed so we can capture the movement and get motion blur of the water, this time we want to freeze our movement. So I bumped up my shutter speed to be quite fast. So I'm currently at one over one thousandth of a second. So I want everything to be tack sharp, even the movement of the waves. I want no motion blur from them this time. And now we basically wait until we get some good waves. I've seen a couple already. So how do you know if you're getting motion blur from your camera or motion blur from a subject? So if you're getting motion blur from a camera, your entire image will be blurry. It'll have that same shake to it. If you're getting motion blur from a subject, then only the subject that is moving in your frame will be blurry and everything else will be sharp. So that's how you can tell the difference. I'm going to pack up because we're going to head to another location. We're going to take some portraits now and talk about getting sharp images with that. So this tripod is super lightweight. It is 1.4 kilos and uses 1.2 millimeter carbon fiber. So it's really easy to travel with. So I'm going to pop it on my camera bag. Reason number three your photos are not sharp is because of your focus settings. You need to choose the right focus mode and the right focus point for the situation that you're shooting. So let's talk about portraits for a minute. When I'm traveling, I like to bring a tripod with me so I can get not only the landscape photo we just took, but also photos of myself in these locations. 
Because of social media, I'm sure we've all been in this position where you need to film yourself or take behind the scenes of yourself working. And again, that's where a sturdy tripod is really gonna come in handy. So this tripod also comes with quarter inch accessory threads. You can find them just here on the legs. You can attach anything from a monitor to a power bank to a microphone. Uh, so I'm gonna use this articulating arm from Small Rig and I wanna get some behind the scenes shots on my phone. So this articulating arm does not come with a tripod. I did purchase this separately, but they are super cheap. And I'm gonna attach this phone mount to the articulating arm and this does come with the tripod. And now I can get a cool behind the scenes shot where my phone films what the camera sees as it's taking photos. Photos. So when it comes to doing portrait photography on a mirrorless camera, I would highly recommend to switch on face detection or IAF and switch your focus mode to continuous autofocus. That way the camera will continue focusing on your subject even as they move around in the frame. So for these portraits, I'm just gonna be sitting down here on the rock, but if I were to be moving around or your subject is walking or they're running, make sure to use a fast shutter speed to be able to freeze their movement. If you're in a DSLR, then I would still recommend to use continuous autofocus, but rather than relying on IAF, you would just need to move your focus point to be over your subject's face or eye. The sun has just come out so I wanna take a close up photo. So let's go over there into the sun. And I wanna be standing up for this shot. So I'm gonna open up the tripod as high as it goes. And we do have a quick release lever so you can bring up the center column nice and fast, which is very convenient. I think the clouds are gonna ruin my plans, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna try and be fast. Aperture is another reason why you might not be getting sharp photos. If you're taking a portrait with a wide open aperture of f1.2 or f1.4, so these photos, for example, I'm taking at f1.4, you might be getting focus correctly on your subject's eyes, but because you are using such a shallow depth of field, the rest of the face might look out of focus. So if this is what you're seeing with your photography, then you need to bump your aperture up to get sharper images. Let's get some photos at f4. We are back and the light is getting good. I'm so excited. So we were just talking about aperture with portraits, but aperture also plays a big part with landscape photography. So I'm gonna get a really low to the ground shot. So with this tripod, you've got a button here on the hook that you can take out and this turns into an Allen key wrench. Then we can use this quick release and take the center column out. And what you would do with a typical tripod is that you would turn this upside down and put that in there, lock that up, and then you'd mount your camera to this plate here upside down so you can get that super low to the ground shot. The problem with that is that your camera is upside down so it's quite annoying to use. And we don't actually have to do that with this tripod. So I'm gonna take that out. So we can use this Allen key to unscrew just here and then you can detach the center column from the bore head. And now I'm gonna put the bore head back on the tripod. So now I'm gonna unclip this and open it up. That is practically touching the ground. I've switched over to my 14 millimeter prime because I want this to be a really dramatic shot. There we go. That's so cool. I love that it's not upside down. I found a beautiful little rock who's gonna be the center of my frame. And I'm gonna start off by taking a photo like this wide open. So we're at F1.8 at the moment. When you zoom in to look at that photo, we've got the rock that's in focus because that's where I've placed my focus point, but then the rest of the image is out of focus. And it's not very interesting to just be looking at a rock. So you want to be able to see both the foreground and the background. And the way we're going to achieve this is just like our portrait photo, we're going to increase our aperture. As you increase your aperture, you're going to be letting less light into the camera. So you also have to lower your shutter speed. So you want to make sure that you keep your shutter speed in mind if you have a moving subject in your frame. Luckily here, we're just photographing rocks, so I can go with a pretty low shutter speed. If you need to keep your shutter speed a bit higher than 1 over 20, which is what I have it currently, then you also want to increase your ISO. I'm also really glad that we have a super dramatic sky. I don't think we're going to get any color, the colors that way instead, but at least it looks really beautiful in the frame anyway. It's super moody. The next reason your photos might not be sharp could be due to your lens. So lenses typically have an aperture range in which they are sharpest. The quality of your lenses will also determine how sharp your photos are. Let's say you have an f1.8 lens, you might find that even if it is in focus, it doesn't look quite crispy and quite as sharp as you would like. That means you just need to bump up your aperture to find the sharpest point of that lens. Lastly, something that I think is often overlooked when it comes to taking sharp photos is the focal length you're using will determine what shutter speed you need to use. So the bore head of this tripod has a load bearing weight of eight kilos. And while I've already been using pro gear that does have a fair amount of weight to it, 
I did also bring my heaviest lens. This is the heaviest lens that I own and I want to try it out on this tripod. All right, so this is the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter. And there we go. It's pretty sturdy on the tripod. 600 millimeters is an extremely long focal length and the longer the focal length you're using, the more chance there is for motion blur. So if you're using a 600 millimeter like this to do wildlife photography or sports and you're finding you're getting motion blur in your images, it could be because you're not using a fast enough shutter. So a general rule of thumb that I like to keep in mind is that whatever the focal length I'm using, so let's say 600 millimeters, I like to make sure my shutter speed is at least double that to make sure my photos are sharp. So for example, if I was using a 600 millimeter taking photos, I would want to keep my shutter speed at 1 over 1,250 to get sharp images. And I usually apply this rule when I'm taking photos on any kind of lens from 135 millimeter and above. So this applies to portrait lenses as well. I really hope you found today's video helpful. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you want to check out the tripod, the AP100 from Small Rig, I'll leave a link in my description so you can check it out. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I'll see you all next time. Bye.